It is with great pleasure that I introduce our 42nd Mayor, Eric Garcia. Thank you, David. Thank you so much to each of you. I uh, just returned from New York uh, from something called City Lab, which Mayor Bloomberg put together with about uh, 50 mayors from around the world. And there was a professor who's written another book uh, Benjamin Barber. It's about to come out called If Mayors Rule the World. And besides it being very self-serving, uh, it's a book that I actually, to your point, completely agreed with that while we watch the breakdown of national governance and its ability to solve our everyday problems, it is at the local level that we indeed are tackling not just this city, not just this state, not just this country, but indeed the world's most intractable challenges. And so I'm so excited to be here today um, with you, Eli, and thank you for the generous introduction, David. Um, Tuesday was my 100th day in office, and I've spent those 100 first days focusing on a very back-to-basics agenda of growing our economy and making sure that City Hall works better. These twin pillars are the two essential components of a strong city. A thriving economy uh, that provides opportunities and pays the bills, but a, also a city government that delivers the core services that improve the quality of our life safe streets, clean streets, and streets in good repair. To these ends, today I issue my first executive directive as your new mayor. One to establish a city of Los Angeles, sorry, one to establish a city of Los Angeles Great Streets Initiative. This initiative I swear she's not on my staff. <laughs> this initiative springs forth from my experience on the city council. It isn't an abstraction, it isn't something academic. It's something that's rooted in the day-to-day -day work that I did for 12 years representing the heart of the city in neighborhoods like Hollywood, Silver Lake, Atwater Village, and Echo Park. When I first joined the council 12 years ago, these neighborhoods were very different places. They were places that had been great once, but they had, well, lost their swagger. Echo Park still had a vibrant daytime pedestrian life, but too many businesses were run down, and our idea of nightlife was unfortunately gang crime. Too many of Silver Lake's storefronts were empty. Atwater Village was a thoroughfare, and in world-famous Hollywood, tourists were shocked with what they found. In fact, a study showed that an average tourist stayed for just 22 minutes in the 80s, getting off the tour bus, taking pictures of the handprints and footprints of the Chinese theater, looking around, and getting the heck on that bus as quickly as they could. But we focused for over a decade on the basics on the street level health of those neighborhoods. More cops on the streets, business improvement districts to clean up our streets and our sidewalks, and amenities like improved medians, pocket parks to restore neighborhoods and attract investment through acts of urban acupuncture. Dickens once called this the key of the streets, and we found that key and unlocked prosperity. Today, Hollywood is seeing more investment than it has in four decades. Echo Park was named by the American Planning Association as one of America's 10 great places. Atwater Village was crowned by Curbed LA last year as the 2012 Neighborhood of the Year. And Silver Lake was named by no authority less than Forbes Magazine as the hippest neighborhood in America, which seems like a paradox if Forbes is picking you to be cool, but an unthinkable title nevertheless. When we first set out to turn around these neighborhoods, we started by talking with local leaders about what they wanted. And we also started by walking the streets. What quickly became obvious to me was that people were looking for community. In fact, it was Aristotle who said that people came to the city to preserve life, but the city exists for the good life. People were looking for the good life, for places to meet, to shop, to spend time with their families, places where they felt safe. Now, I imagine many of you in this room, if not all of you, have been to Abbott Kinney Boulevard in Venice, Ventura Boulevard in Studio City, 6th Street in San Pedro, 1st Street in Boyle Heights, South Robertson Boulevard. There you find communities that are anchored by emergent or emerging great streets. With places to eat, places to shop, places to downward dog. <laughs> it's very good form there. <laughs> places that are accessible by car, bike, foot, and transit. And while each of Los Angeles' neighborhoods is distinct and unique, the core of what makes a great neighborhood is the same. Places to eat, places to shop, and places, again, to downward dog. Places that are nearby and accessible. 
This approach is a shift from the way that our neighborhoods have been planned in Los Angeles in general. Over the last decades, we've seen a shift away. And at the same time, it is very important for us to return to our original design, a city that really began as a collection of neighborhoods. And those neighborhoods begin with their streets, streets that are based on walkability, transit, and that serve as community hubs. In 1909, in the introduction to his yearly report, city engineer Homer Hamlin said, I'm sure you all know this by heart, I recommend that steps be taken looking towards the establishment of an adequate boulevard system. We are all firm in the conviction that Los Angeles is destined to become one of the great cities of the country, and steps cannot be taken too soon to ensure action which will properly give it the reputation as being one of the most beautiful as well. Los Angeles was built around the red car, built around local shopping services, built on a scale that was paid to the people of Los Angeles. But as we began to shift to become the car capital, this shifted as well. Our neighborhoods began to be built around the automobile. The scale increased. Pedestrians were cut off from storefronts, separated by acres and acres of parking lots. And neighborhoods themselves were cut in half and separated by freeways. All of this not in the name of convenience, but the cost was extreme. We are realizing now, like we did in the early days of our city, that there is a better way. And in our dense urban metropolis, great streets are key to restoring and elevating our neighborhoods. Streets make up approximately 13% of the land in our city. That's over 60 square miles, which is roughly the same size, coincidentally, as those folks who are going to lose to us in the championship, St. Louis, <laughs> which is 62 miles. Our streets and sidewalks are the largest open space resources that we have in the city. And I love the statistic that all of that land that is there for cars, a car only sits on 5% of the time. This presents an incredible opportunity to take an asset that we already control and to use it as a tool to improve communities. And we will accomplish this through the Great Streets Initiative. The way City Hall currently makes decisions about streets can be overly complicated and confusing with a complex breakdown of jurisdictions spread across multiple departments and agencies. My Great Streets Initiative will be laser focused on interdepartmental and regional coordination. It starts at City Hall with a Great Streets Working Group comprising all relevant departments. Departments of Transportation, City Planning, Cultural Affairs, Water and Power, Economic Workforce, uh, Economic and Workforce Development, and the Bureaus of Street Services, Engineering, Street Lighting, and Sanitation at our Bureau of Public Works. This group will be tasked with putting together a strategy for identifying and recommending great streets to focus on throughout the city, but some of their work will impact every neighborhood and every street. Their first priority, in fact, will be to make sure street projects are coordinated. No more Bureau of Street Services paving a street on Monday and DWP digging it up on Tuesday. <laughs> Second, they'll use coordination to leverage existing resources to dramatically improve streets. Let's combine a DWP pipe project with some street furniture funds and with a sidewalk repair project all at the same time. And while we're at it, let's add some sculptures and murals as well. Some of the work will be specific and catalytic. And so the third focus of this group will be to proactively plan ways to revitalize key corridors, the backbones of our neighborhoods, like Sunset Junction and Silver Lake and Glendale Boulevard and Atwater Village as we did, and are incredible examples of what is possible. And I want to emphasize something. As your mayor, I believe that design matters. Our great streets should be a reflection of this. The most creative spot on the face of the earth right now is Los Angeles. Go to a museum, a gallery, you can see it and feel it. Public art, beautiful benches, distinctive lighting. We have ignored the aesthetics of our city too often, but the way a neighborhood looks and feels has a lot to do with its livability and vibrancy. The results of all these efforts? We hope it's busy storefronts, offering amenities and jobs closer communities with increased convenience and bonds between neighborhoods, people taking in a play, people going out to eat and falling in love, healthier neighborhoods for all of us. In 90 days, this working group will have developed a list of candidate streets from across the city, and in 18 months, we'll be moving dirt along these corridors. We've also used Prop O funds to create what we call green streets. Green streets are areas where we remove pavement and allow water to infiltrate back into the ground. They're good for our environment, they're bioswales and catch basins capture stormwater runoff, 
prevent polluted water from running into the LA River. But green streets are great streets too. People also walk on our streets. Yes, don't listen to the missing persons. People do walk in LA. <laughs> Did you know that we're smack dab in the middle of Walktober? Who's been celebrating Walktober? Huh? I can't think of a better month to announce this initiative. Now if we can get Walktoberfest by merging Oktoberfest and Walktober, <laughs> really be in business. Of cities over 500,000 people, Los Angeles ranks ninth out of 33 in walkability, which you might think sounds good until you see here our score, which is just 66 out of 100. Now when I used to teach at USC and Occidental, that was pretty close to a failing grade. And Los Angeles is not a below average city. So let's get that number up, and let's focus on those neighborhoods like downtown and Mid-City West that rank in the low 90s. It is my goal to increase this walkability in neighborhoods across the city and to bring our city up in the rankings. Luckily, we have the superheroes of Los Angeles Walks to help us along the way. And no, you don't have to dress like that to walk in LA, but we welcome you if you that's your choice. We have a whole host of initiatives already underway helping to foster great streets. It's time now to put a strategic focus to our streets and our initiatives under one roof. Which is why announcing this initiative here at ULI makes perfect sense. Gail Goldberg knows a thing or two about assembling a world-class team to analyze and evaluate issues and to do real planning. This is what has resulted in the report that was released and discussed today. Our Great Streets Initiative will build off the work that all of you have accomplished and build off the recommendations of the Transit Corridors Report. I firmly believe that with this initiative, we are taking another big step towards a fundamental change in how we perceive, interact, and build the environment around us. A great neighborhood needs a great street as its backbone, and this city needs to have the political backbone to realize that. So while you're here in Los Angeles, those of you who are visiting, along with spending lots and lots and lots of money here in our stores and restaurants, I encourage you to take some time to walk around downtown, walk score 92. To have some of the, and to see some of the great streets we already have. In her great book, Wanderlust, Rebecca Solnit said, Wanderlust, A History of Walking, Rebecca Solnit said, the magic of the street is the mingling of the errand and the epiphany. So while you're out there, whether it's running an errand or searching for epiphany, think about how we can make Los Angeles full of truly great streets once again. Thank you so much.